The word hope means this. It means I not only hear that which furnishes ground of expectation, but it means or promises desired good. Well, I'm so glad, thank God. He has he has promised us desired good. We sung about that first this morning. Do you realize that? How beautiful heaven must be. A sweet home of the happy and free. Amen. Hey, I've got that promise this morning. I'm not going to the devil's hell if I die in the flesh and friend I'm not going to stand in judgment at the white throne judgment one day I'll be cast off eternally into a lake of fire Why? because I believed in my heart and I confessed with my mouth how the Lord Jesus Christ and God put hope inside of me amen and that excites me but then friend that word hope also means this it means confidence in a future event. A confidence in a yeah. future event. Well, heaven is a future event for all of us that are saved. But the blessed hope that we read about in Titus chapter 2 and verse number 13, that is a future event. Yeah. We're reading about having access in grace right here in these two verses of Scripture. And we preach that little series on grace in the letter G. And I I still got a little bit further to go when God gives me liberty to do that. But friend, listen, a future event in my life, if I don't go by way of the rapture, then I've got to go by way of the grave. But thank God, because God has already promised me that His grace is sufficient, then I know that when that day comes, God has already promised me that for that future event, however it might be, whether it's drug out, through some kind of suffering and affliction, or whether it's immediate friend, God will give grace will be able to check out of this life. Amen. Man, I've got hope this morning. Do you realize that? And if you're saved today, I want to give you about five things if we have time this morning because you have hope. Number one, listen now. Number one, because you have hope. Because you have Jesus Christ, the hope of glory living inside of you. Number one, Live every day because how you have hope. Now go back with me this morning to Ezekiel chapter number 37. Ezekiel chapter number 37. And say amen when you get there. And keep this in mind now. I live every day because you have hope. I live every day because you have hope. Now in Ezekiel chapter 37, how we find the valley of dry bones. And we realize for I would according to the scripture in verse number 11 it said this then he said unto me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel but you and I know this morning friend how that God has instructed us in the church how to be able to look back and let Israel be an example to you and me and now I'm telling you Ezekiel chapter number 37 in its literal context and in its prophetic context is a beautiful thing I concerning the nation of Israel. Now, now let's read it. But I want you to notice some things about us as well. The Bible said in verse number one, how the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Now, prophetically, friend, what God is dealing with here, how the valley represents the world in verse number two, and caused me to pass by them round about. And Behold, how there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Dry bones are dead bones, amen. Yeah. Dry bones are dead bones because they don't have any life in them. It's not just simply that they don't have any sinew, that they don't have any flesh on them, but their ears, I know there's nothing flowing through them. You and I know, friend, how it's from our bones that we get our white corpuscles and our blood. Go on, look at verse number three. And he said unto me, Son of man, how can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord, thou knowest. I'm glad God knows. Amen. And then he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now it is talking about his real friend, but you have to understand something. Before you got saved by the grace of God, before Romans 10 9 became a reality in you, and before these other verses about hope became a reality in you. 
you were out there in the world and you were dead just like yeah. these dry bones, amen. And thank God, I'm glad. I look at verse 4 said, Hear the word of the Lord. Well, that's exactly what you needed. And that's exactly what I needed. As I've already quoted, I'll do it again here. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And we have access into this grace by faith. Amen. And then he goes on and he says this in verse number 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and know his sins. And ye shall. And ye shall. And ye shall. Now can I say this about the nation of Israel, friend? There's coming a day when Israel will spiritually live again. Amen. Yeah. That's a future context. The Bible said this in verse 6. I will lay sin use upon you. I will bring up flesh upon you. And cover you with skin. And put breath in you. And ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, I, there was a noise, I, and the whole was shaking, I, and the bones came together, I, I bone to his bone. Amen. I, I like that, friend. I, listen, with the Zionist movement I, in the late 1800s, I, I, this is when this started taking place, I, and those bones that had been scattered in the nations around the world, I, I, friend, God started bringing those bones back together I, into the land of Israel, I, and putting them back together. I, I noticed how what it goes on and says. It said in verse number 9 or in verse 8, when I beheld I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them about or above, but there was no breath in them. Now friend, listen there's no breath in Israel tonight or this morning and they don't have the spirit of God they still are looking for their Messiah to come God's brought them back into their land the bones have come together that God's put the sinew on the bones and God's put the flesh on the sinew but God is not yet breathed my friend upon that nation but thank God one day at the end of the tribulation period he will yeah. that nation I'll be born in a day that's yet to be seen in verse 9 here's the prophecy concerning that I didn't say he unto me I prophesy unto the wind I prophesy son of man and say to the wind now remember something, friend. Uh, uh, one of the things that the wind represents uh, is the Holy Ghost yeah. of God. Uh, he said, Thus saith the Lord God, uh, come from the four winds, O breath, uh, and breathe upon these slain, uh, that they may live. Uh, and thank God at the end of the tribulation period, uh, how the Spirit of God breathed uh, on that remnant that came through. Uh, but you have to understand something, friend. Uh, uh, the same thing had to take place in your life yeah. uh, uh, for you to live. Uh, uh, for you uh, uh, not not to be a friend out there in the bone yard of this whole world. He said in verse number 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them. Then I'm telling you, into them, I've got something to look forward to. Amen. Yeah. Prophetically, listen, it's not just the hope that God's given me, but God's given hope to Israel. And I'm going to be around to see this. I'm going to witness this firsthand. It's going to be an exciting event one day. And one of the reasons why it's exciting, Brother Mike, is because I've already had that breath of God put inside. Amen. I know what it's going to do for a nation because I know what it's done for me. He said, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. And they lived and stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. And then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. Amen. Hey, that's where I used to be, friend. I yeah. was out back there in Ephesians chapter number yeah. 10. But you had a quicken to a day. Amen. Quicken means to make a lie. Thank God when he saved me. How the way he saved me. How was he blowing the breath of life? The yeah. spiritual breath in yeah. me. Amen. And I'm no longer like Israel. Our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our, our part. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. 
Jesus. I friend, that's the graves of the nations and bring you into the land of Israel. And God's done that. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, oh my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. By the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Let me stop right there. Look what it said in verse 14. And shall I put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. That's what God did when he saved you, friend. Yeah. He put his spirit in you, and that spirit is hope. I thank God that you begin to live. Now, friend, I said this, that because you have hope, you need to live every day because you have hope. Yeah. I live every day because you have hope. Now listen to what that word live means. First of all, live means this. It means to be animated. And then it means to enjoy life. And it means to be in a state of happiness. Amen. Why can I be in a state of happiness? Thank God because I've got hope. Amen. Every night. Why can I be animated this morning? Because I've got hope. Why this morning? How can I enjoy life? Because I've got hope. Now come back to that in just a minute. But the word live also means this. It means to be inwardly quickened and nourished and actuated by divine influence or faith. And that's exactly what God did when he birthed you into the family of God. Yeah. Amen. I mean, he infused life in you. But he didn't just infuse life in you. He infused his life in you. Yeah. He birthed you, and friend, or his. Amen. And he's yours. And thank God the life that now abides in you is his life. And there's nothing slack about the life of God. Amen. The spirit that now resides in you is the Holy Ghost of God. And there's nothing lax about the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Now, because you have hope, live every day. Every day. Because you have hope. Whether it's a day of tribulation. Yeah. Try. Yeah. Preach it. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why I read those verses of Scripture to you. Because every once in a while, friend, I, as I told them out in the vestibule a while ago, I, every once in a while, life's going to I'm going to pitch you a curveball. They're going to pitch you a slider. Or every once in a while, the pitcher's just going to beat you upside the head. Amen. But you know how you're supposed to live? You're supposed to live. You're supposed to live an animated life. You're supposed to be enjoying the trip. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I can tell you this morning, I, by looking at some of you, and I don't say this to be mean and ugly, and say this by listening to some of y'all's conversations, that you're not enjoying life. Amen. Yeah. And that's not pleasing to God. Man. The word animated. The word animated. Live means to be animated. Animated, first of all, means to be lively. I told you over and over again I, that God made this body I, I, a body of action. It's a body of movement, amen. I, God didn't make you to be lazy. I, God didn't make you to be I, I, lackadaisical. I, I, God made you to be a, a creature of motion, amen. I, if you're going to enjoy life, I, you've got to do it lively. I, you've got to be animated. I, you've got to move, amen. 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 Lively. The word animated means vigorous, and it means to be full 